peace be upon you. I was awaiting for you to arrive. Please sit down. I'm sure you can sense the evil that is spreading ruthlessly upon the souls of the people of the earth. I have no hidden agendas or personal interests. I don't plan to manipulate, trick, or deceive you. I merely hope to enlighten you towards a truth. We live at a time where people are being set upon a false path, one that corrupts their minds with sin and disbelief. We are becoming vile and cruel. While some commit minor sins, others are causing children to be orphaned, putting them through poverty and starvation as they hide behind titles. Uh, hello everybody. First of all, we thank God for his unlimited blessings and we welcome our audience and, and we greet our viewers. Today's subject is about when we die, where our souls go, where we are, what happens to us. Is, is our information that we have said or made or thoughts is lost or is kept stored until the day of resurrection. We will analyze some of the Quranic verses, then our search begins. First of all, we will analyze this verse. He said, he released the two seas meeting side by side. Between them there is a barrier, so neither of them transgress. In Arabic, barza. What does a barza mean between the two seas? We will analyze this and the second verse, we will see the second verse. The second verse, it's saying, uh, I might do righteousness in that which I left behind. It is only a word he is saying, and behind them is a barrier until the day they are resurrected. Here it means that somebody, when he dies, he goes to the barza, the barrier, until the, do the day of resurrection. What is this place? We will analyze this, the barza. We stay there when we die. We will search this. We will see the third verse. The, this verse is speaking and not weaker to equal are the living and the dead. Indeed, Allah causes to heal whom He wills, but you cannot make heal those in the graves. In this verse, if somebody is dead, he is still in the grave, even if he is dust. It's telling God causes to heal that he who, who wills that he is in the grave. This means the person is still in the grave. He didn't, his soul didn't go anywhere. He's still in the grave. We will analyze another verse. Here, another verse is, is telling, does he promise you that when you die and you are dust and bones, you will be brought back? Here again it's saying that if we are bones and dust, we will resurrect from the ground. It means that we are in the ground. We will analyze another verse. Their eyes humble, they will emerge from the graves as if they were locusts spreading. Here it means also on the day of resurrection, they will come out from the uh, ground like locust. It means yeah, we are in the ground. We are nowhere else. From the ground we will emerge like locusts. We will look another verse. Here also a verse is telling he released the two seeds, one fresh and one sweet, and one salty and bitter and place between them a barrier and a prohibiting partition. This means between the two seas, there is, there is this barzakh also. The same barzakh that we are going when we die. 
if we find out the bars that is between the two seas and the bars that we are dead, I think we will find out where we are going. We will see another verse. This verse is very important. It's telling, from the earth we created you, and to it you will return, and from it we will extract you another time. This means everybody knows that we are created from the earth, and we will return to the earth, and from the earth we will resurrect. This means again we are in the earth, in the Barza. The Barza is in the earth and the same barza between the two seas. Now we know that when we die, we don't go any place. We stay in the earth, and there is a barza in the earth. We will analyze what is this barza. This is another verse. There is two verses, and we start watching videos. Among these signs is that heaven and earth stand by his command, and after that, when he call you by a single call, you will come out from the earth. Here again, God is telling that when he calls you from the ground, you will come out. It means again that we are in the ground. I think uh, we made our call. We will start watching a video of the two seas emerging together. Then we will uh, comment on it. Place where two oceans meet but do not mix. Amazed? But that's true. We are talking about a place in Gulf of Alaska where two oceans meet each other but do not mix at all. But how it can be possible? How these two oceans cannot mix? Well, we will tell you that this happens because when freshwater glaciers melt, it flows to join the ocean water. Because of the difference in the salt and densities of these two water bodies, a surface tension is developed between them which acts like a thin wall that prevents them from mixing. And that boundary between the two is outlined by a thin layer of foam. Sounds strange, right? And let us tell you those two powerful bodies of water relentlessly standing together but are unable to become one. Well, we say they are like the Romeo and Juliet of aquatic bodies. But worry not. According to scientists, this story will get its happy ending given enough time. The differences between these two bodies will disappear and they will merge together. What do you think about these two lovely water bodies? Share your thoughts below and don't forget to subscribe. Okay, we watch now the video of two oceans. They are not mixing. Why they are not mixing? We will start looking. Remember that we saw it's written in the Quran. Two seas that don't mix because there is a barrier. And this barrier is called the Barza. Mm -hmm. What is the Barza? And remember in another place in the Quran is written that when we die, we go to the Barza. Till resurrection day. Okay, we have found the link that the Barza of the two seas and the bars that we go when we die is the same place. Then if we find out what is in the water that is making this thin white wall, then we find out what the bars is. And finally, we find out where we are going when we die. And our actions and thoughts, where are they? Now we will watch another video to see whether where our emotions and thoughts and feelings are going. Are they lost or are they in this barza also?
Hello? Okay, we watched this video and we saw how the water is interacting with thoughts, words, feelings. Why? We, why? we will find out later. We saw ice crystals interacting with sounds, with feelings. Now we will watch another video to see that even water is interacting with sound. Remember that the sound waves and thought waves are called resonance frequency. We will explain later. We watch now the video. Until we, find, we found out that the water has feelings. Why it has feelings? There is something called resonance frequency. We will watch another video now to see that even the water, not ice crystals, is reacting with thoughts. This is what it is, okay? I said, empty your mind, be formless, shapeless, like water. Now you put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. You put water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle. You put it in a teapot, it becomes the teapot. Now water can flow or it can crash. Be water, my friend. This is a water droplet that you're going to see. And in this water droplet, a frequency uh, is being pumped into this water droplet. As the frequency uh, is mirrored in the droplet, you'll actually see the geometric patterns in that droplet. Now what's happening, and the reason that this is so significant, is because we're going to do a frequency sweep. We're going to go from low frequencies to higher frequencies. And what you'll find is this. You'll see that in the lower frequencies, the patterns are less complex. And in the higher frequency, the patterns are more complex. So we're going through a sweep from lower to higher frequency. I'm sharing this with you now because Earth is essentially going through a frequency sweep. Our fundamental pulse, our base pulse that has hovered around 7.8 cycles per second now is changing. And again, there's a lot of controversy about what the change is, and we're witnessing the change. As we go through our planetary shift of this pulse, patterns of energy must change to respond to that, just as patterns of energy in this water are changing to respond to this, to this pulse. And we'll begin with simply the concentric patterns in the water as the frequency begins. Every once in a while, we'll reach a key threshold resonance, such as that moment right there. And in that key threshold resonance, the entire pattern morphed into a more complex expression of itself, simply because the frequency changed. Now watch what happens. The frequency is still increasing. Now watch what happens. As we reach a, another key threshold resonance, this entire pattern will morph into a beautifully uh, and more complex pattern of itself. Again, and again. And look at this pattern right here. Look what you're seeing right here. Look at the beautiful geometry. Here is a perfect cube. There's a perfect tetrahedron, a star tetrahedron. In two dimensions, we've got the octahedron very powerful images of sacred geometry held in place simply because we've achieved the vibratory pattern that allows that in this water droplet. <laughs> 